Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So on today's video, we are going to do a detailed analysis of a winning penny stock. Now you'll say, Akshat, have you gone crazy? On one hand, you're saying penny stock. On other hand, you're saying winning penny stock. So that sounds super counterintuitive. Okay, so essentially I invested in a stock called as JP Power. I showed you live investment also, so people can comment if they have seen that video. If not, I will link it here. Please go and watch it. Post investing in that stock, the stock has gained 20%. So I'm going to disclose my strategy as to why did I make that investment. I'll help you understand the concept behind that investment. Then I will take you through detailed analysis of JP Power. So I'll do both technical and fundamental analysis. So essentially three things I will discuss on this video that will help you understand how to value penny stocks in a more concrete fashion. So first and foremost, we are going to discuss what are high capital expenditure oriented businesses and how you should play with it. That's one. Second, we are going to discuss the fundamentals of value investing. I can make a series of videos on value investing, but I'll keep it short. I'll explain it to you at a high level what value investing actually is. And third, we are going to study JP Power. So that is the agenda. So let's kickstart the video. Please watch it till the very end. If you understand half the things, watch only half the video. Yeah, no, don't do that. Make notes, study it properly. That's A. B, please press the like button. It helps more people get financially educated. It motivates me to make more videos and it just spreads good karma. So from that angle, hit the like button, hit it now. Okay, let's get started. And first and foremost, let me help you understand the concept behind high capital expenditure business. If you understand this simple concept, you will not end up losing a lot of money. I talk about a lot on how to make more money. But if you understand the concept behind high capex businesses, you will not end up investing in companies which are losing a lot of money. Okay, so let me help you understand what high capex, capex businesses are, right? So high capex businesses. Now for that, let us take the opposite spectrum of it that what are low capex businesses, right? What are low capex, right? Businesses. So I advocate a lot on my channel that you should go and build what digital businesses, right? Digital businesses. I keep talking about it. I have discussed about it extensively. Maybe I'll come up with a video series on how to build digital businesses. But bottom line is that I keep advocating building digital businesses. Why is that? Because these are low capex. So capex means capital expenditure, capital expenditure. Right. So what is capital expenditure? So let me illustrate that point by giving my own example. Right. So I run a company called as Cases Over Coffee. Right. Cases Over Coffee. Right. And I also run like a YouTube. Right. I also run a company called as My MBA Journey. And there are a bunch of other different investments that I have made. Right. Now, what is the primary nature of all of these businesses? Number of things. Number one, that right from day one. Right. Right from day one they can make money, right? And the money flows into your bank account. I'm not talking about like big money, millions of dollars from day one, not in year one, but essentially these are cash flow rich businesses, cash flow rich businesses, right? What is cash flow rich? That for example, if I come out with a specific digital product, for example, Cases Over Coffee is a subscription based service, right? Now, if we open up this platform on day one and people start subscribing from day one, we will start getting money from day one. Right. So that's the bottom line. Now you'll say, Akshat, no, you're wrong. You know what? On YouTube, it takes like 4000 watch hours and this and that to get monetized. So don't take this discussion literally, but just understand the sentiment behind it. That businesses like Cases Over Coffee, YouTube, My MBA Journey or any digital product that you are trying to sell, it generates returns from day one, roughly speaking. That's point one. These are cash flow rich businesses. What are cash flow rich businesses? That the money starts hitting your bank account. Now, how to build this business, all that stuff, we will discuss on some other video. But I hope you understand the concept behind low capex business. To build these businesses, we don't need, right? Absolutely don't need to create a massive infrastructure, right? For example, if you want to start your YouTube, all you need is a camera, you need you and a basic table and you can start shooting, right? So that is all you need. Similarly, in order to create a company like Cases Over Coffee, what is it that you need to do? You just need to create a website and you can start selling your product. So you don't need to invest a massive amount in terms of developing the infrastructure before you start making money or before that cash flow starts hitting your bank account. So I hope this helps you understand what low capex businesses are. So let's move on to high capex businesses, right? High capex businesses. Now high capex businesses essentially are examples like IRCTC, right? IRCTC. What other examples you will say? You will say power company, right? 
you will say companies like airlines right you will say companies like bharti airtel right bharti airtel now why is it that these type of businesses or industries these are high capex business so let's understand this by taking the example of bharti airtel now if cash flow needs to happen for bharti airtel then what is it that bharti airtel needs to do at the back end they will need to install like mobile towers right mobile towers need to be there right they will have to purchase spectrum purchase spectrum right they will have to hire a lot of people and and they will have to undertake a bunch of different different expenses even before 1 rupee comes into the company true or not you tell me similarly if you take a look at irctc in order for irctc to make money at the time of starting they have to again hire staff they have to lay down like railway tracks they have to build trains or they have to rent trains so essentially all these businesses be it railways power logistics airlines now these are all high capex businesses so this is the theory part you will say akshat okay great sounds good i understand the difference between high capex low capex okay great you have explained me the theory now explain me the practical part of it that i am an investor i need to invest like 100 dollars should i go for high capex businesses so my general advice to you is no right so you should not invest in super high capex businesses for the simple reason and let me demonstrate by using an example right so let's say that you invest like 100 dollars in something like bharti airtel right bharti airtel now things go well right and bharti airtel generates a profit and you end up making 120 dollars in year 1 right so you gain a profit of 20 dollars now this is year 1 right so you will say okay hey akshat i made like 20 dollars on bharti airtel super happy that i made like 20% return in year 1 should i invest more of my money in bharti airtel because i want to make 20 dollars more right so in order to make 20 dollars more i'm not talking about 20 dollars in total but 20 dollars more right so in order for you to make 20 dollars more that is your total profit for that year should be 240 bharti will have to invest 200 dollars to generate that right at a 20% return so essentially what i'm getting at roughly speaking don't get into the semantics of it is that here the return on equity is low right is low for any high capex businesses now you would say okay hey akshat you know what this sounds really confusing to me because here we are getting like proportionate return that i invest 100 i get 120 then i invest 200 i get 240 when i invest 300 i get 360 so essentially my return is somewhat fixed right it's moving like in a linear fashion right that the more money i invest the more money i end up getting so what is wrong with this philosophy why is it that you are not advocating investing in high capex business okay hear me out what happens is that this cost of capital that the entire money the company is investing the cost of capital keeps on going up right it's like saying this that that let's say if you have 1 lakh rupee of loan on your head right now right maybe you are paying 10% interest on it now if you end up taking 10 lakh rupees loan you have taken additional 9 lakh rupee loan right now would you be paying higher than 10% interest on that 9 lakh rupee the answer is yes because the more you borrow the more difficult it becomes for you to borrow that capital so this cost of capital keeps on going up therefore these high capex businesses if their roe return on equity at any point any point it gets stuck you will lose a lot of money this is an explanation that you will rarely find people talking about because this is a fundamental concept i would really want you guys to pick this up this is not a speculation channel that i am recommending like stock x or stock y i would really appreciate if you pick these type of concepts because this is what helps you build fundamental understanding on analyzing businesses so i hope we are clear that hey low capex business high capex business what you should be mindful of while investing in high capex business be very very mindful if the roe of a high capex business is not improving you will get stuck with it and at some point this cost of capital for a high capex business be it bharti airtel be it jp power be it airlines industry they have all suffered in terms of financing they have literally suffered due to poor financing now you might have a very interesting question for me you might say akshat uh, can you talk about like a high capex business which is really good right can you name a company yes i did a separate video on that that was about page industries so let me first and foremost show you the roce of page industry it is 48.2 so it has a very high roce business roe return on equity is again very very high if you take a look at nestle if you take a look at page industry they have very high roce and roe it means that the cost of capital for these type of businesses will keep on going down they are high capital expense business yes they are high capex business let me show that by taking you through the balance sheet of page industry 
so here you can see fixed assets of page industry constantly rising absolutely constantly rising it has a high capital expense business but why is it a good business because the company has consistently generated high return on equity and high roce if you don't understand return on equity and roce please watch my previous videos you will understand that more roce simply means that if you are giving company 100 rupees it turns that 100 rupees into 140 rupees with a 40 percent roce reinvest that free cash flow and keep on improving its roce this is very very important concept for you to understand so i gave you an example of a good high capex business which is surviving and which is thriving right so okay so this gets us to point number two where we will speak about value investing so now the problem is that if you find companies that are high capex right for example page industry right page industry or Nestle. On the flip side, you will again find businesses that are high capex, for example, something like JP Power, right, or airlines industry, right. These are high capex plus high ROCE or ROE, right. On the other hand, you will find businesses that have low ROCE or ROE, right. Both are high capex businesses. Now, these type of businesses, for example, Page Industry, Nestle, HUL, these are all high capex businesses and they are trading at a very high price also right because people are not dummies right of course if they find like a great business like page industry or nestle or hul they can also take a look at roce roe and they will invest their money so these type of shares you will rarely find at a very low price right very low price you can check it for yourself on the flip side if you are taking a look at high capex businesses with poor roce or roe you can sometime find these businesses at a discount okay very very important concept super super important concept so essentially what is value investing value investing is that finding companies that are trading at a low price right that you buy inexpensive companies at a good time make money out of it book profit and go away right that is what value investing is now you'll say that okay Akshat, can you explain like some other type of investing okay so the investing that i do is growth investing mostly but whenever opportunity presents where i'm finding some really good value stocks i will buy them for example i bought jp power because it was a value buy it was not a growth buy for me growth investing is me investing in cryptocurrencies or me investing in tech stocks me investing in a company like equita small finance bank these are all growth companies for me these are not value buys for me because all these stocks now are trading at a decent level these are not inexpensive buy in this market right now so i hope that you understand the second concept that is the difference between value investing and growth investing of course i can make like a detailed video let me know if you would want me to do that but i hope that you get the basic premise about what value investing versus growth investing is so this brings us to the third and final section of today's video that why is it that i ended up investing in jp power so let me do a thorough analysis in the next few minutes about jp power so first and foremost what is it that jp power does super easy that they basically generate hydroelectric power and they participate in power projects they do both thermal and hydropower many people are saying that you know what akshat thermal power is dead thermal power is basically coal generated power now approximately 51 or 52 percent of india's entire power is still dependent on coal right that is thermal power yes we can talk big big things about solar energy wind energy hydropower this that good we are making progress there but still majority of our nation's electricity depends on thermal power so please don't believe in that narrative that you know thermal power is dead no that transition from thermal power to more renewable sources of energy will take a lot of time lot of time so please keep that in mind okay very quickly so what is it that jp power does it essentially builds thermal and hydropower projects and it's operating a bunch of different things for example it's operating dams it's operating like thermal power stations mix of different different things so that is what it does now here is the interesting thing about power industry right power industry now how do power industry or power companies like reliance power or tata power or jp power how do they make money okay so they essentially sell electricity right profit is equal to revenues minus cost right okay so that is what profits are now for this equation to hold true what needs to happen to the profits profit is what price times the quantity right price times the quantity and cost is fixed cost plus variable cost right so that is what the formula says now the price is fixed by whom it's not as if that jp power will decide at what rate it needs to supply power this is done by the government right very important 
quantity now this will always keep on going up because the demand for electricity in india will only keep up we don't need to do any research here this is true but this is a super regulated industry because the government decides at what price you need to sell right super super important concept here okay now you'll say akshat okay can you talk a little bit about fixed cost plus variable cost structure okay i can do that as well see now what is the major raw material in terms of generating the power that will be the cost right because jp power will have to procure some raw material in order to generate electricity which it can then sell so that will be variable cost what would it depend on it would depend on the coal prices now who decides this again this is somewhat decided by the government so essentially if you are investing in something like jp power or reliance power what kind of business are you stuck with you are stuck with a business which is highly regulated where the revenues are decided somewhat by the government cost structure of that company is impacted by the government policies massively because government decides at what price you need to procure coal they can't do it on their own it is a high capex business because every time jp power has to go and build a hydroelectric plant it is not getting any cash flow for that particular duration unless the hydroelectric power plant starts generating electricity and it can sell it so again please keep that in mind so you are stuck with a business which is highly government regulated high capex business and it has a high financing cost right high financing cost please keep these basic points in mind and let me now take you to the charts okay here is what you would see so let us look at the profit and loss statement for jp power now if you check the profit and loss statement you will see that jp power's operating profit was going up and up and up and up right up until what point up until 2016 it was going up roughly 2015 2016 was a good time for jp power now take a look at net profits right that 242 162 highly variable and 2016 onwards it started exhibiting loss now tell me one thing that if you check the sales number the sales were going up even till like 2018 sales were up but the profits were getting negative sales is i it's that that jp power is selling more and more and more stuff but they are not doing it profitably for a bunch of different reasons correct with me till here now what was the reason for this the reason was very simple and you will find the answer in the balance sheet that if you go to fixed assets you will see that the capacity expansion of jp power was very very high it literally from 2010 to 2017 its capacity expanded by almost five times right from 4200 to 27000 so essentially it was like saying this that in 2010 they used to have like let's say two hydroelectric power plants now by 2017 two multiplied by five so because they increased their capacity by five times they were running 10 power plants now every power plant was running at a loss so they were taking more and more and more of that headache why was that happening okay you will find the answer in the cash flow statements so if you take a look at the financing activity you will see this that cash flow from financing was positive up until 2015 when there was no problem but 2016 onwards it started incurring more and more financing losses which means that it was being poorly financed right that their cost of capital for undertaking that capacity expansion was increasing more and more and more so running 10 units suffering a loss everywhere in terms of financing running a loss on everywhere on all those 10 power plants so that was a headache oriented situation for jp power now something very similar is happening with oyo i am coming out with a video tomorrow do watch it super interesting video you will learn more about startup financing from that video but i hope you get the picture that hey despite expanding the capacity on every single unit jp power was struggling why because they were paying more and more and more interest on whatever they have built as a result of this poor financing activity the share price was tanking like anything so let me take you through the share prices so you can see that you know back till like 2012 2013 the situation was fine right up until 2014 also it was at 21.55 now when this poor financing situation hit you can take a look that the share price almost corrected from 25 to 6 7 rupees right and it has been going down and down and down and down and down right now what would be a good time to buy this stock so first and foremost you must check the volumes right so here you can see that during this zone there were very high volumes all these bars that you are seeing right so that was one it shows that operators are aggregating this stock okay now why are they aggregating this stock let us look at the root cause of the problem which is the financing activity so if you go to the balance sheet and if you take a look at fixed asset right so from 31000 in fixed assets 
they have reduced it to 14,272. It's like saying that they used to have 10 power plants. Now they are running five good power plants, right? So as a result of cutting down these different power plants and focusing on only profitable power plants, what they have been able to do is that they have been able to generate net profits. For example, if you check 2021 numbers, the company is positive. Trailing 12 month profit has been positive and this has happened after so many years. That is precisely the reason why the share price is going up. Now, what is the target? I can look at the technicals and tell you the target. Then a lot of people will get stuck with that call. So I don't want to disclose it publicly here and please don't consider this as a recommendation, but I'll just quickly show you the technicals, right? So this is called as cup with handle pattern, right? So essentially, this is the entire cup, right? And this is the handle, right? Now, essentially in these circumstances, what usually happens is that if you take the depth of this, right, and stick it over here, right? So that becomes your rough target. Now, am I going to hold it? Am I going to sell it when? All that stuff I'm not going to talk about here right now. This is what technicals tell us yesterday. I shot a video on candlestick patterns. Please go and study that, super important. You will learn more. Bottom line, if you have made profit on it and if you're happy with it, sell it, no problem. If you want to hold it till the technical target, I'm not going to say it. So please make your own call. So in summary, on this video, what did we learn? We learned about the fact that high capex businesses need to be properly studied before you invest your money. Otherwise, if you invest your money in a high capex business and it cannot service its cost of capital, then you will lose insane amount of money. There are people who would have invested their money in JP Power at 25 and they would be sitting on a massive, massive loss right now on such a stock. So please don't go for high capex businesses if you don't understand stock investing. Simple way to look at that. If you're doing it, then properly study it and then invest. Second thing is that penny stocks are not bad as long as it is a value buy. Super important concept. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up and I will see you the next time.